<laughs> okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Get Legit webinar. Uh, this webinar is Leveraging Social Media for Your Cannabis Brand with Elizabeth Udell. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Uh, my name is Erin, and I'm the Education and Communications Manager here at the Cannabis Alliance. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. It is our hope that anyone interested in commercial cannabis here in Nevada County will take the time to tune into these webinars, educate themselves, and continue to be or become stewards of the environment and of our community. The Get Legit Educational Series provides the preparation necessary to assist in securing a local cultivation permit and state cultivation license. The series includes webinars, support groups, business skill training, and a mentor program. Um, all of these Get Legit webinars are online, free of charge, and open to the public. <clears throat> we have some fun, exciting upcoming events with the Alliance. Um, one of my favorites is we have a movie screening of Reefer Madness at the Nevada Theater with a pre-celebration gathering of sorts at Elixart. Um, save the date is for May 8th, um, so stay tuned for more details for that event. We also have a member meeting coming up on April 25th. Um, I've posted some information on our social media channels, so just stay tuned for that as well. Uh, shout out to our allied industry business sponsors, Ag Natural, Four Seasons Garden Supply, Forester's Co-op, Humboldt Seed Company, Happy Sap, Arvin Plant Labs, and Sugar Shack Extracts. Thank you so much for your support. So what is the Alliance? We are a nonprofit trade association representing the local cannabis community here in Nevada County. Our mission is to support public policy initiatives through representative advocacy, provide educational opportunities, and create space for connection within the industry and the greater community. Um, some services that we provide to our members. We have a consistent voice and representation locally and at the Capitol through our statewide partner Origins Council. Uh, check them out at originscouncil.org. Uh, we also have monthly educational webinars to assist with permitting, <clears throat> excuse me, and licensing processes, as well as uh, business skill training, much like the webinar you are on today. We have a buddy program to pair permitted farmers with new farmers. We have a Slack online hub for resource sharing, sharing local policy updates, um, and as well as the industry mixer like the one I mentioned before for our members. Um, there are some ways to stay in touch. You can become a member of the Alliance. Um, you can just visit our website at nccannabisalliance.org slash membership. I'll put these links in the chat as well. And the services we provide to our members I just mentioned above. You can also become a sponsor. Uh, you can visit our website again at nccannabisalliance.org slash sponsorship. Um, there's opportunities for shout outs on our webinars, uh, tabling opportunities at our events, as well as spotlights on our social media and newsletters. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at Nevada County Alliance, and our Facebook handle is just Nevada County Cannabis Alliance. We have a bi-monthly newsletter that's you can subscribe subscribe on our website as well. It's nccannabisalliance.org slash subscribe. Uh, we have policy updates, events. Um, you'll be the first to know about anything we have going on in Nevada County. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can email info at nccannabisalliance.org. And again, I'll link to all these things in the chat. So today, the format of today's webinar is a presentation followed by a Q&A. Uh, Elizabeth Udell will be giving that presentation with a Q&A to follow if you do have questions. Uh, your participation is encouraged. We uh, encourage you to use that chat section um, for the Q&A, um, as well as asking as many questions as you have to make this webinar more useful for everyone. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website at nccannabisalliance.org under our Get Legit tab, and I will link to all those things in the chat for you. And then that's all that I have. Diana, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, thank you all for being here. Uh, that's great, Erin. Awesome. Okay, I'll pass this along to Elizabeth to introduce herself and move forward with the presentation. Thanks for being here, Elizabeth. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, it is really great to be here and chat about all things cannabis social media. Um, I've been doing it um, primarily for about nine years in California and then the rest of the country as I started working with 
MSOs and brands that really just wanted to expand. So I know that there are different regulations off platform per state, per county, city, but on platform, it is pretty much all the same and their compliance is what matters first. So I am going to get started on a presentation um, primarily focusing on Instagram and I'll lightly touch on a few other platforms. And um, if you do have any questions that come to mind, please feel free to send them through. I'll be answering at the end and we can get started. Okay, so introduction to Instagram doesn't really need one, but we got it anyways. Um, first, everyone knows that Instagram is a photo and video sharing application in terms of cannabis, uh, cannabis compliance. I would say it's in the middle, uh, Twitter being the most free speech, TikTok being the least. So you have Instagram, Facebook right there in the middle. Um, it really is a platform that we can't ignore as marketers, even though we have to navigate it really, really heavily with cannabis. Um, there have been other platforms that pop up that is more cannabis friendly um, and is supposed to um, try and be a replacement, but no one is leaving Instagram. So we do have to work with it. Um, Instagram has billions of users a day. It really is one of the best ways that you can reach your audience and get your message across. Um, since Instagram is so visually focused, content has never been more important. We've never had to be more creative in our lives just because of all the competition and all the noise out there. Um, and since the popularity of TikTok in March 2020, um, they have come out with their own competitor, Reels. So I think that it has really changed the game on Instagram and just made it more, um, more interesting as a marketer and a creative before when we were trying to put videos on the platform, they weren't well received. It was really, really difficult to tell the stories the way we wanted to. And now with reels, you can take something that was going to be a photo of, you know, maybe gummies, and then you could transform it into its own more in-depth story than instead of just a photo of gummies and captions. So while you may think Instagram is primarily photos, reels have really made it so much better. So the importance of Instagram for cannabis brands, um, the first, like I mentioned, is the reach. You can't ignore that there are a lot of users on the application, even if your content gets deleted, even if your account gets deleted, it's frustrating. You might just want to be like, F it all, but you can't deny that that is where you are going to find your audience and most customers. So working with the platform is the best way to get the most out of it. I never had a shutdown. Um, so quick background, sorry. Um, I was head of social for Cookies Retail, head of social for MedMen. Um, I've been in a lot of different brands as their social. Um, and I never had a shutdown until I went to cookies. Um, that's because the C-Byte logo is really just heavily policed. Um, anyone around the world can make an account, throw up the cookies logo, or just start trapping. So those always are targeted. Um, I wish that compliance and rules were fair, but it really does just vary account by account. Um, one account can post flower and never have a shutdown. 
another account could post flower and get it removed. So it really is just playing with the platform and there are definitely other factors, like I said, like with cookies. So um, with that being said, I had never had a shutdown because I always just like really just knew the rules. Um, the basic rules are you cannot promote the sale of illegal goods. That's why phrases like available now, buy now, prices, addresses, those do get flagged the most because you are, you're not doing awareness anymore. You are actually selling. So you want to stay away from those kind of imagery, whether it be graphics or verbiage and captions. Um, and that's, you know, just like right off the bat. Um, thankfully, I've realized that reels are policed less. Um, a caption talking about THC percentage, you know, how to open up a gummies tin, all of that is going to get flagged over a video of how to open a gummies tin or talking about a new cannabinoid. So that's just something to think about right off the bat. And I'll go into more compliance. Um, engagement is definitely still there for Instagram. Um, there's so much content on there. Like I said, you have to be really creative to get that through, but you really are able to connect with your audience through the content you make still. And especially with trends, um, a lot of trends are born on TikTok and they're moved to Instagram. So if you see a trend going on on Instagram, you know, reels or a kind of meme that pretty much took place off Instagram, maybe it was Reddit, Twitter, but you have to kind of be in tune with the internet to have a really successful Instagram page. Um, it's not its own little thing anymore. It's all one giant ecosystem. And the more you're able to have fun with trends, um, the better it is going to be for your brand and account in the long run. So cannabis social media marketing in 2024. So with all of the good stuff, you do have to realize, you know, what is going to be the cautious aspect. And that is what I just said. So no advertising, illegal goods, no buy now, no available now, no sold here, no dates. Um, you can really get your point across. Um, one of my clients today, we just launched in a new state. So we know it was like, welcome to the family, Pennsylvania, right? No, now available in Pennsylvania, because maybe it will get flagged, maybe it won't, but it is leaning more towards will get flagged. So that's when you have to be creative and think of different ways to get the message across. Um, health claims. So I learned this really early on with MedMen. Um, you really can't and shouldn't promise that your product is going to do anything. You could say may, you could say um, can, oh no, you can't say can. You, say, you can't say can, you can't say will, you could say may. So, you know, always just like err on the side of caution that this product, like there, you know, it won't help you sleep, but it may help you sleep. Um, I had a client get sued by the county that they operated in um, for having health claims on their website, and it was for a lot of money and they lost. So you always really just want to be um, cautious when you're talking about your products, because if Instagram maybe won't flag that, you actually can get sued off platform. And um, that will hopefully change down the line with more funding for um, for um, research and medical research, but unless, you know, we're not really, like, we're not really there yet. So always be careful. And uh, follow community guidelines, right? Um, abusive, dangerous, legal content, it will be removed. Um, don't just be too obvious with things. Um, always play it safe. Don't um, don't have a lot of kind of, you know, like just, I always want to say like, you know, be professional with it. 
Um, anything that could just help you continue to fly under the radar is just going to work out for you in the long run. So cannabis Instagram trends. Um, there are many different content pillars that we're going to get into, but these are definitely some standout ones for me. Um, the first is user generated content. If you use, excuse me, if you use Instagram and TikTok, you will see that the content is mostly low budge shot on an iPhone using their Instagram or TikTok fonts. Um, so they really want it to be really realistic, really like on the fly. So if you are a brand, definitely like work with content creators. Um, I like saying content creators over influencers. I think influencers, you know, used to be um, people who would just like take a picture and have a code in the caption and content creators are making videos and actually have to um, be more creative than what they were doing prior. So if you're a brand, definitely tap into content creators who are already doing this really well and have really good numbers. And um, a good tip is to ask for a collab post so that the post shows up on both the all's feed and you can leverage their audience as well as yours. It is a great way to grow and you are getting just like really good content out of it. Um, with influencer marketing um, collabs, that is always a great route if maybe you um, need something on the fly or you have a whole campaign where you don't need all of that user generated content. So you can have um, micro influencers, maybe you get like 20 micro influencers, you give them your product, you seed it, um, meaning you just give it out for free without expecting anything in return. Um, that's really great to get um, some free content for you to repost as well. Um, lifestyle and experience marketing. Um, so going to events, um, new product launches and taking content from there, really great and authentic. And um, again, just like another avenue for you to show off the realistic approach to your brand. Um, educational and informative content that's always going to be heavily received, um, whether it's about, um, whether it's graphics about what's going on in the news, or it's about your product, which is, you know, broken down in a very user friendly graphics way, or, you know, it could just be about, um, some science that's going on. Either way, if you're able to make these really cool graphics, then they're going to be shared, they're going to be saved. If you use Instagram, you follow people, you know that they're putting these on their stories and sharing information. So that's always going to be a great route. Um, I think also with words, it helps with your SEO. If you have a new product out, you know, why not make a graphic about it? instead of just having a picture of the product and hopefully relying on the caption. So you're able to just like get them all at once. And then at the end of the day, humor, um, Instagram and Facebook every week put out like their top posts of the week on the platform and 99% of it um, are memes. So just being funny, that's what people want. They want to laugh. They want to be entertained. If you can make funny memes in the form of reels or graphics, then please do it because it's really just how you will also get your message and brand across. Platform diversity. So there's Instagram, X, and there's TikTok. YouTube is um, long form. You can definitely repurpose shorts, but shorts are only up to a minute long and shorts are YouTube's answer to TikTok and Reels. So I'm going to focus on these three um, with Instagram. So they are definitely, like I said, in the middle when it comes to restrictions. 
Um, so with videos and obvious photos, it has been, e not obvious photos, um, it has been easier to work with, kind of like this, you know, that's obviously a joint, but the strain is cereal milk and it's in a bowl of cereal. So when thinking of kind of product photos to make um, and want to like be interesting, spice it up, that's something you could do that's also more compliant. Um, X, formerly Twitter, is the most open compliance, um, is the most open compliance wise for cannabis content. Um, very few instances I've heard of cannabis removed, but you can really post flower anything you would like without any repercussions. The only problem is X is its own, excuse me, X is its own beast. It is really, really hard to build a following and to get your messaging across on uh, X. I kind of think X is a lot like Tumblr. Um, a lot of the posts that I see that get traction are like just vibes posts. So um, if you want to have a presence on there, it is really um, going to be difficult. Same with TikTok. TikTok is the strictest for cannabis content. Um, I've had a lot of luck with cannabis posts, um, primarily accessories like this one. Um, I got um, my boyfriend custom forbidden tips. So um, those are joint crutches. I didn't call them that. I called them forbidden tips. So TikTok is going to take a lot more creativity and loopholes than any other account. Um, you can pretty much make TikTok style videos on reels with smoking, with product shown um, in a better, in a better way that you ever would not be able to for TikTok. So marketing cannabis on Instagram, um, Instagram has become one of the most popular social media platforms for marketing the products. Um, as I mentioned, you will need to continue to find creative ways to promote the products on Instagram without violating their rules. And it helps to work with someone who's been experienced in this. Um, as new states come on board, um, I get tapped in across the country because um, you want to like really just like play it safe. It's not worth it having someone come in and like ruin your account just because they aren't fully aware of the rules. So really just you want to vet the right person to run your social media if it comes to that. So these are examples of compliant Instagram posts and reels. Um, so compliant cannabis product image. Um, I took this when I was working with Plus. Um, it's really just realistic. You see what is in the tin. There's all the information you're going to need. Um, you really don't need overly stylized product shots. Um, they don't perform as well anymore. You know, save the expensive photo shoots on something else and just go crazy with an iPhone or a regular camera. Um, users want to see what they're getting pretty much, you know, like this is a very realistic photo. Um, this is a compliant cannabis lifestyle photo. Um, lifestyle photos are still hard to get reach on though, um, because Instagram doesn't really know what to hone in on. Um, this is for a brand I worked with, Wink. Um, they, they're really, it's really pretty, but it doesn't get fed, right? So, you know, what's the point of making something that no one's going to see? Um, it is compliant because the packaging, you wouldn't really know it's cannabis, but like I said, it is just really hard to get that fed through the app because Instagram doesn't really know what's going on, doesn't really know what it is. It wouldn't know that it's a cannabis drink. And then this is a way to share news. Um, High Times does this often, but it's basically taking a news story. There's the headline, they put their branding in and there is what the, um, there's a photo of what the article is about. Um, sharing news articles is mostly safe. I've seen people go above and beyond and kind of like X out the word cannabis, things like that. So, um, sharing news is really informative. It helps you with shares. Um, it's a good content pillar and tactic. 
These are examples of some high performing cannabis Instagram photo posts, um, infographics. So um, I had this one made um, to announce a new product that we had at Plus. So getting right to the point with an infographic does really well. So targeting energy levels as the THCV does. Um, how does new cannabinoid, all this was compliant. Um, cannabinoid could be under the awareness education, um, THCV. Um, this just has become a compliant asset when you are able to kind of just shape it this way. If you had a photo of just this tin and in the caption you were going more in depth that's when it becomes a little risky but trying to you know put all your information in an infographic will help you get um get, get it through more without um, having to worry about some issues humor and memes um again you can't so this is like this is fun. This is from Weed Feed. Um, that's obviously a joint, but because it's in like a meme style, um, SpongeBob, it's become more safe. You're not promoting the sale of good of illegal drugs. You're just, you know, making art. You're having fun. Um, and then good looking compliant flower. Um this is a good way to do it so it doesn't get removed. Um, you know, maybe if you have a holiday like this one is obviously a Valentine's Day post. Um, this could become non-compliant if they added in maybe trigger words in the caption, if they had the um maybe the THC percentage in there. Um, but because it's just like really good looking flower, it's become a little more artsy, it's safe. So um, examples of high performing reels. Um, these are all reels that I've made with my content group. Um, we have a partnership with Hemper. So we really just try and go in with the clickbait and the humor. Um, so for intrigue, um, we hook our audience to the questions. So, you know, we're like, WTF is this? And then we'll go into the video and show that it is a dab wand. Um, but because we got them with this at the very beginning, that is going to make people tune in. Um, we lean into education. So three benefits of the hemp wick. And then throughout the video, we list those. Um, and then for humor, um, so we again, like kind of get them with the clickbait, like want to see a magic trick, hit the joint, and then we'll make the smoke disappear. So these are all like the best ways to tell a story. Excuse me. Um, think of them like articles, right? And how they are leveled out. Um, we got the headline first, get them with the body, and then hit them with the conclusion. So that's how you want to um, really tell your story when you have videos and you can't do that with photo posts anymore, unless you do like a carousel, but then that's, you know, it's, it's different. Um, cannabis copies, do's and don'ts. So do highlight the benefits of, camp of cannabis, um, scientifically proven health and wellness benefits, make it, you know, make it worth the while. Um, you don't want to go too in depth with the trigger words like THC or cannabis. Um, so you definitely still want to be compliant, but um, talk about how cannabis could be beneficial for sleep if you eat this gummy. Um, don't use sales language. So no in stores, no buy. Um, and uh, use inclusive language. Um, you know, you want to keep like, unless your brand is specifically for a certain demographic, you know, maybe it is more on the trappy side, maybe this other brand is more on the health and wellness side, um, but you definitely want to make sure that you know who your customers are and that they can relate the best to your brands.
So for hashtags, um, you definitely want to leverage trending hashtags, but you have to stay away from hashtag cannabis, hashtag THC, hashtag weed. Those are uh, those are shadow banned hashtags, and you're drawing attention to your post. Um, so you want to be relevant and trending. Um, if your post is about um, some gummies, then you know I would do like hashtag one of the states that you're in. Hashtag gummies is pretty chill. I do gummies. Um, edibles could be flagged. So, you know, you definitely want to look at that first, see if it's shadow banned. It'll tell you um, when you type, when you go to search in a hashtag, it'll tell you um, if this one is like, you know, harmful or not. Um, and then um, maybe, you know, what is, what's about if it's a CBN gummy, maybe, you know, like ways to sleep, you know, things like that, that just like help make sense and what the asset is about. Um, branded hashtags for campaigns and products are great. Um, it helps you keep track. So maybe your brand, if it's uh, safe sounding, definitely use that. Um, and if you use uh, contests or giveaways, then you can make a custom hashtag to also track it. So influencer marketing, um, partnering with social media influencers who have large engaged followings in the cannabis space can be a great way, um, whether it's with collab posts, like I mentioned, to just get your message out there and use their audience. Um, the more relatable and natural the videos are, the better the outcome. It's really the best thing you can do. Um, with my content group, we have about maybe 3,500 followers, but with Hemper, they have almost 700,000. So these videos, right? Like, because we collab with them and get their audience, we're able to achieve these numbers. Um, the content needs to be good at the end of the day. Like, it doesn't matter if we collab with them because just like whatever they post is not a guarantee win, but the content is good and it needs that extra leverage. So if you're working with an influencer and you're starting out and a new account, always just try and collab with them, put it in the contract because it's just gonna help both of y'all's accounts. Community building. Um, so having brand ambassadors online really helps. Um, they'll constantly be promoting your product. They'll be posting about it. You can give them product. Um, it's great offline and online. Um, hosting live events. So maybe if you want to go live on Instagram or you're participating in a podcast or you're doing any kind of event in general, um, it's really great to have that come onto your Instagram too. Um, then you can also maybe do a recap after or um, kind of just like show that footage. Either way, it shows you're part of the community and you're doing things offline and on. Um, encouraging user-generated content. So if people are tagging you in content, um, reshare it onto your story or even reshare it onto your feed that will incentivize people to want subconsciously to post more because you have the chance to be featured especially if you run contests and campaigns um then you get even more um content for your brands um if you get them on M sms or email that's also the best because your account can go down um if you don't follow the rules and you really want to have that data so having them on email or having them on text is just going to be great for a backup so if you're running any contests um it would be great to um have an offline landing page to really capture that data um, and you can promote that through your Instagram. Um, respond to all comments. Um, social channels um, really like you kind of have this whole 24 seven approachable. So it'd be great if someone comments on your post and you respond back, even if it's just like emojis back, it just shows that, you know, you're active and then people will um, be more inclined to interact with you. And then sharing the user content, um, like I said, will help promote the um, will help promote the um, the tags and the engagement.
So a good content strategy is user generated content. So, you know, you want to put that in your feed. You want to get that kind of relatable, realistic content in there. Advocacy and awareness. Um, cannabis is not all sunshine and rainbows. Um, there is still a lot of social injustice going on and um, the stigma is there. So trying to, it doesn't have to be all the time, but every now and then, you know, kind of just making some content that acknowledges maybe that you have worked with a certain group or, um, you know, certain important dates out of the year are coming up. It's just really great to acknowledge it. Um, so you can just have more cred and um, your followers will, if like, if anything, be educated, um, which we see in educational content. Um, so beyond advocacy and awareness, um, you wanna share informative posts about the benefits of cannabis. Um, different strains, consumption, consumption methods, um, especially for reels. I think that no question and no piece of content is too small. Um, do a what is CBD, do a what is THC, do, you know, <laughs> three different ways to dab, like make content out of anything and everything if it's applicable to your brand. Um, because people are always constantly looking to learn, um, like for the Benefits of hemp wicks, for instance, right? You know, might be nothing to you. you. Use hemp wicks all the time, but maybe a lot of people don't. So just try and make as much content as you can. Um, interactive campaigns. Um, there's polls and quizzes that you can start implementing in your stories. Um, and there's contests that you can do on the feed, asking for follows and engagement, excuse me, and engagement. Um, which is just going to help with a follower count and just um, increase that engagement overall. Same with event promotion. Um, if there's any cannabis related events, launches, workshops, industry, talk about it, post about it. It's only going to help your case um, for, you know, getting more followers. And if you are participating in a cool event, you know, like you want people to know about it. It's cool. If you're doing Hall of Flowers, if you're doing um, any other kind of regional conference, then you want to definitely tell your followers about it. And then um, behind the scenes content. So maybe it's into the um, maybe it's in the uh, warehouse. You're making um, joints. Maybe it's a bunch of gummies coming off um, the machines. Um, behind the scenes content could be cool. Videos definitely over photos um, where people could see it in action. Um, again, humor. Um, people love to laugh. So definitely incorporate as much as you can on your social media. Seasonal and holiday campaigns. If it's applicable to your brand, obviously, you know, there's the holidays, but um, if you don't, like, you don't have to post Bessie Patrick's Day if you don't want to, but if you have a lot of green branding, you know, try, <laughs> make it fun, um, but if it makes sense, do it. Uh, cross promotion, so um, if there's maybe other kind of brands and other industries that you're able to do partnerships with um, or other other kind of um, products that maybe make sense, um, you know, shoot your shot. There's a lot of brands and other industries that do cannabis things now. So, you know, trying to align where it makes sense, maybe an event. So that's definitely a really great one. Um, sustainability and social responsibility, um, being eco-friendly is really big in this industry. So if your cans and tins are biodegradable, then post about it, talk about it. If you give back to a charity, post about it. Um, customer engagement initiatives, so loyalty programs, VIP, exclusive offers, a lot of brands and dispensaries have loyalty programs. 
you definitely want to let your followers know that that is going down. And then product spotlights, um, maybe once a week you talk about one of the products um, or you talk about a product category or you give a user testimonial. Um, but at the end of the day, whether you're a brand or a dispensary, um, you are selling products. So you definitely want to keep those the forefront of your strategy. Cannabis regulations. So, um, as we all know, cannabis is illegal at the federal level. So, digital platforms they're on a federal they operate on a federal level, not a state one. So, obviously, it would make sense if you can run ads in California and only target California, but you can't, even though the Farm Bill has really opened the floodgates on cannabis ads. I, for one, am seeing a lot of cannabis ads on Instagram right now which is very interesting. Um, but just never forget that that's how the platforms, um, how they work. So with um, cannabis advertising, um, if you are getting fed cannabis ads these days, they are still playing by the rules to an extent. You know, they're making videos that are not so obvious. They're bring you to a website or landing page that is pretty compliant. So um, I definitely encourage trying to do some ads right now because of the open season, um, but you still have to put some care and thought into it. Um, and state level legalization. Um, so whether it's um, whether it's medical or recreational or flat out illegal, um, Obviously, every single state is going to have their own regulations that you need to just be aware of. Um, if you are a dispensary, you're going MSO and you go into a new one and, you know, you might think off the top of your head that they're adult use, but they might still be medical in um, a lot of their counties. So always just look at your state regulations before you start promoting online. So with federal regulatory compliance, um, always follow the FTC guidelines, which means you do have to disclose if you are doing a paid influencer partnership. Um, just because it's cannabis doesn't mean you are able to get away with things like that. So um, treat cannabis like any other industry if you're acting like any other industry. Um, avoid substantial health claims and restrict youth marketing. Um, do not post about um, cartoons. You can't appeal to children um, with cookies. You used to get in a lot of trouble with that, um, with the Myra bags. So always, you know, end of the day, remember that um, it's rare that off-platform compliance comes online, but they definitely can get you. So education and advocacy, um, you know, you definitely want to educate consumers about cannabis health benefits. You want to educate them about responsible cannabis use. You want to advocate for federal cannabis legalization, and you also want to partner with nonprofits supporting cannabis reform. Um, it's something small, but it definitely helps with your cred, and it is what people want to get behind on, especially if you are a growing cannabis brand and you're operating in different states. So um, it's just like really better for you. Um, as I mentioned, we can't fully work in this industry without recognizing the injustices that still go on. Um, so definitely really important to keep that in mind when you're crafting a um, brand and content strategy. Some data analytics. Um, so first you definitely want to establish your KPIs. Um, I always, I think it's really hard to gain followers right now, but, um, but engagement is super high and that's just kind of how people are using the platform. Um, if they are scrolling through reels and they like a video, they laugh or, you know, they laugh, they like, they comment, they share it, but they might not follow you. So they'll move on next. But if you keep creating content and because they interact with you, you're most likely to get fed to them again. So maybe by the third time you're fed to them, they'll finally follow you because they're like, oh, great. Yeah. So like, I like your stuff. 
excuse me. So I wouldn't really be worried that your follower count isn't growing, but your engagement is really high. That's just how the, how the platforms are working right now. Um, you can set up social listening and analytics tools to track all this. Um, if you don't really have the budget for it, you can just use Instagram analytics to see how that's going. Um, and then you should definitely track your shares, comments, and engagement rate, because if that's still going strong, um, that means your content is doing well and you're already like halfway there for achieving your goals. Um, measure your reach and impressions, especially if you have a campaign. Um, it's also really great just to track your impressions anyways, because um, that just shows like how, like how often your content got fed, regardless of people interacting with it or not. Um, if you are starting to gain a following, you should definitely see what cities they live in at least, um, and definitely how your male to female ratio is, um, because maybe you want a higher, or, you know, maybe you realize you're like 90% men and 10% women, but you definitely want more women. So you got to start making some content that is more female focused without being like too obvious and in their faces about it. Um, and then you calculate their return on your content production spend, um, obviously with your sales data. So, um, you definitely don't want to be spending a lot of money on content production right now. You can really just make your reels off your phone start from there um because it is really tough to get a good roi back on content production understanding the algorithm so the algorithm so instagram is very you focused um let's say you follow you follow 700 accounts and they are mostly cannabis related and it's like very obvious cannabis. It's like flower, things like that. And you constantly interact with flower photos and memes. You're not going to get fed maybe a lifestyle photo that you primarily don't interact with because Instagram is going to be like, well, this person never really likes these kind of artsy photos. Why would we send it to them? So you always want to make sure that you're making content that's consistent. So that is what's always going to get pushed. It is really difficult to analyze content um, and know what's going to work and what's going to hit again, which is why you have to hire a social media manager who knows what they're doing. Um, because there's nothing worse than just wasting content. But remember that it isn't about the brand. It's about the follower. Um, if you have a follower who likes all your stuff, then it doesn't matter what time you posted. The moment they open the app, your post is going to be the first one there because they're your biggest fan. They always interact with your stuff. So time of day matters, but it's mostly like when people are awake, right? You're not going to post at two in the morning just because no one is physically on the app. So you have a good shot between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. to get any content out there, but it's just always going to get fed the, the kind of content that your followers engage with the most. Um, that's why you have to optimize the content for the algorithm. Um, consistency definitely being the, the biggest key. Um, you, if you always make these really nice stylized infographics, um, posting just a straight product shot probably won't get fed because most of your followers interact with your infographics. So Instagram sees you post non-infographic, they're gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna push this. All your followers don't like, wouldn't like it, wouldn't even know what to do with it. Um, and, and, and leveraging your insights, so definitely identify your top performing content and just keep making it. <laughs> if it hit once, do it again. Um, series are great, right? On um, on Instagram Reels, part one, part two, part three. Um, you have to keep consistently going with it. Um, maybe you won't get traction until part three. Um, that's why you know you like just because it didn't work the first time. Keep going, um, and this is primarily for reels. Um, I know a lot of people who make really great series um, and that's what, you know, people just like to tune in with. So 
um, always, always analyze what you post after you post it. Um, don't just post and forget about it. You should be looking at least every week on your top performing content, what made it so good and analyzing it and recreating it. So in conclusion, talk to y'all's ears off. Um, Instagram is great for cannabis brands. We hate it. We love it, but we have to work with it and the results can just really be beneficial. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> I will now take questions <laughs> now that I'm just talking into the void. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, Elizabeth. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. That was amazing. Uh, we have a Q and A tab here and it looks like Craig Johnson has a question about how can we get fake accounts removed? Um, there are fake names with his name and face. Is that a thing? Yeah, so fakes are really tough, right? I have a mushroom client that is the ultimate spammer. Um, every new follower we get, they follow and DM, and a lot of people have been scammed. Um, the most you can do is just keep asking people to report. It can go really in depth with it. You know, you can type in why you're reporting, who they're pretending to be. Um, and then if that isn't really working, um, you can try. And I know meta help is really difficult, but go through meta help, but then also maybe through LinkedIn, finding a meta employee that you can chat with. Um, unfortunately, this is extremely common um, and I wish they had better support, but you have to utilize all their tools first and then um, try just reaching out direct. Um, should I just go through the Q&A? <laughs> yeah, do you want me to just ask the questions okay. or do you want to look at them? Sure, I see okay. them too, so okay. <laughs> like. Uh, okay, so Alex, uh, what are the benefits or downsides of becoming a verified brand? Um, I wish it mattered being verified, but I know a lot of accounts that are verified that get taken down. So really no benefits except for, you know, you are the official. Um, with dispensaries and with shadow bands, um, you know, there's a lot of accounts that are underscore, like, you know, cookies underscore Melrose underscore cookies dot Melrose. So the benefit is that your followers know that you are the official account. Um, it doesn't help with shadow banning. It doesn't help with, um, removed content, but, um, it is primarily what it is known for. Um. And that is um, letting your followers know that they are interacting with the original. Um, I do see a follow up. So, what type of account is best? What type of account is it best to be? Personal, professional, or business? Um, I like professional creator because then you get to use the cool um, Instagram sounds, and you can't do that if you're a business. Um, and I like to use my free music. Hey, Emily. <laughs> Um, do we need to remove CA or other state warning symbols or trigger words like cannabis from packaging photos? We've been doing that to add a layer of safety to our content, but it's a tedious editing process. Um, I was just telling a client today, um, that's what I'm seeing Jeter doing, and they like this blur it out. You know, they're not really removing it, but they are blurring. So if that helps with editing, um, I definitely think it helps. Um, and that's just like, again, you know, like it's so, there is no direct rule. If you can have the state warning, if you'd have the THC, it's really just what Instagram feels like doing. So you can always just try and be overly cautious. Um, if you have a history of getting a, your account removed or you have content removed, then I would say err on the side of caution and just blur out um, the THC logo, um, or blur out things like cannabis from the packaging. 
Um, also, you will have more freedom if you do reels. So, you know, if you want to start shifting your content to video over photos like that, um, that's a good move too. Um, Craig, a reel or post for a picture with music? Um, both. I've been really utilizing photos these days with music. Um, I had to do my own research as well and just be like, does this really help your reach? But it does because you are um, you are going, you are playing into the music. So when people search the music, your post comes up. Um, so I have been um, using my photos with some added music, if it makes sense. And with reels, okay, so this is also really annoying, right? Because original sound um, does incredibly well on Instagram, but so does also tapping into music. Um, so I say, if you can do spoken word, um, you know, like my friend, she's a chef, right? So all her videos, she doesn't add music. She's a spoken word. They do great. So it's really just going to be content by content basis. Um, if you want to have a video where you're talking a bunch, that's going to do well. If you want to have a video, which is like cool music that can do really well too. Um, I would, um, when you're choosing your music, they'll tell you how many, um, how many videos roughly have used that sound? Um, I would definitely want to use a sound that has over 20,000 videos because that means you're part of a trend and you have better chance of being seen. Um, hi, Sabrina. Um, what do you see as the top types of content that cannabis users look for in cannabis social media? Is it more niche trends or educational content? Um, I think that one, um, so, uh, so I guess it just like varies, right? So it really is associated with the brand. Like let's take 710 Labs, for instance, right? For 710 Labs, their users really love the memes and they really love the product photos. But at the end of the day, they just love everything associated with the brand. Um, niche is tough unless you have like a really dialed in audience. Um, trends are great because they're savable and shareable. Um, again, people really love to laugh. People really like to play into trends. So, um, I think at the end of the day, if you're true to your brand, um, if people love to consume your product, then that's going to make your content so much easier to really decide whether you want to always showcase the product aspect um, and then go into educational. Um, like if you have a new product that's out with a new cannabinoid, then obviously you'll have like a product photo, but then you go into the educational and make a graphic about it. So um, I think that like, all types of content on cannabis basically, but it just has to do with your brand and how much you can get out of it, if that makes sense. Um, Alex, uh, what's the, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say, there's two hands that have been raised for a little while. I'm gonna allow them the, a moment to ask their question real quick. And oh, cool, cool. Chat. Um, Linda, sure. you are first. I'm gonna allow you the chance to chat right now. If you are there. Linda, are you there? You there? Okay, we'll move on to Michael, if he's still available. Michael, are you there? <laughs> Maybe he's muted. Michael, are you there? Okay. We'll come back to you. We'll come back. <laughs> And there's one more. Carly Kramer has a question. Carly, you there? Okay. Carly? Okay, Don't we'll just move on to the other questions then. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so Alex, uh, what's the best practice if you have multiple people that need access to the Instagram account for content posting, any third-party apps for monitoring, monitoring uh, posts? Yes. Um, so um, I like I like Falcon for posting. Um, and I also like just like the good old like Facebook Creator Studio, even though that one's really tough to see drafts. 
Um, food suite is fine. Um, I feel like sometimes the formatting gets off. Um, but if you have a lot of people posting, um, then definitely you want to use, um, probably Falcon because it keeps your drafts in there. Um, and any third parties for monitoring, mo monitoring, um, posts and access, um, that's kind of like the same thing. Um, Falcon, um, definitely, uh, helps with that kind of, um, that kind of thing. Um, Sabrina, uh, should we be cautious of hashtags? Uh, definitely, um, you want to use them, but you also definitely be cautious. You don't want to use hashtag cannabis, hashtag weed, um, do some, um, be, uh, be niche and definitely be broad. Um, if your brand's in California, you know, you could do hashtag California. If your brand is Orange County, so, you know, utilize those kind of hashtags, um, but you don't want to use any of the trigger words. Um, and maybe like five hashtags is the max. Um, any recommended third party after creating reels? Um, I use CapCut. Um, that's definitely the best. I really hate Instagram's um, reels creator. I feel like it's really buggy. So I definitely love CapCut. Um, that's the best for sure. Um, Sabrina, do you see less product photography and more organic content? Yes, I see a lot of organic content now more than ever um, because it's cheaper to produce and it just does better overall. Okay, we have a question from Rachel. Rachel, are, are you available to ask your question Hi, now? Yes, I'm available. Hi. Yes, I'm available. Hi, Hi. Elizabeth. I just, I just want to say that I've followed you on LinkedIn and I'm like, I'm such a fan of the work that you've done. And as a fellow cannabis social media professional, it's just, you are like the <laughs> epitome of what you should be doing. So I follow you. I oh, am such you. a diehard fan and I've learned a lot. Um, so I have oh, one. Thank specific... you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so <laughs> I have one very specific question that um, over the past six years of my career, I have seen become just more and more difficult and challenging. So I know cannabis memes are so popular on social. I mean, it's amazing. It's so relevant. I mean, it can be, it can be, you know, in any type of industry. I yeah. have found it, unfortunately, so challenging and so difficult to get things approved by my compliance and my legal teams. And in the beginning of the webinar, you referenced um, a meme, the SpongeBob and the joint meme, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. Um, <laughs> so how did, you, how did you pitch that type of content or how how can I or how have you pitched trending content or relevant content or like cartoon content and get it approved by your legal and compliance team? Have you ever encountered IP issues? And if so, how did you vouch for those content ideas to be approved? Because they, they I know they work on social and everyone does, but having to prove to the teams that it is social, but there's this like gray area of meme world, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, any insight is, is much appreciated. Yes. Oh gosh. So I think, so I think what's interesting is, um, I remember a few years ago, I saw a can do like a Dunkin' Donuts, you know, like obviously not approved, obviously Dunkin' Donuts didn't know, you know, right. But it was for the internet and I'm sure their legal team probably had some issues with it, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, and this conversation does happen a lot on LinkedIn, um, especially for the trends, right? Like the best kind of accounts are the ones where you don't have to have approval. Um, so I would say, you know, just having the, um, talking to your direct report, if you have one and just like giving them um, that like anticipation, like, you know, you want me to succeed as social media manager and you want me to create content that's timely, then, you know, you have to just let me run with these trends. Um, I really wouldn't worry about IP. Um, that's not, you know, like we're not, we're not talking about Disney, right? Like we're not talking about Mickey smoking a joint. We're not going crazy like that, but you definitely, 
can stay within trend parameters um, and like telling their legal team that this is all like, this is all just like for the culture. It's for the internet. Um, no one is gonna come cracking down like that, especially um, if you're not just like, really just being so blatantly obvious like with disney i would say disney is probably um the biggest uh the like i i would be the most nervous about disney um but i guess you know as i'm saying this it kind of also brings about like the whole nfl thing right like the super bowl so every year everyone's like the big game the big game but it's okay if you see some brands say super bowl so the nfl isn't going to come crashing down on everyone I say participate in the trend. The memes can be super, super funny. If you have memes, you know, like Barbie, right? Like no one was going after Barbie. Everyone was like, oh yeah, you know, Barbie's IP. Like everyone had fun. Everyone took place in the trends. Barbie isn't going to come cracking down. If a trend is really building and you can have fun with it, um, just like, you know, shape, um, shape it that way to your legal team. Just know, um, and you can just show them a bunch of examples of um, other brands participating in the trends. Um, and just like say like, you know, it really is just like, it's the internet, it's hard to explain, it's the culture, but we're missing out on not doing this trend just because we're worried about something that's not going to happen. Um, it definitely is legal's job to worry about these kind of things but it's not going to come down like smack dab on you thank you so much this was incredibly helpful and it's exactly what i hoped you had said <laughs> thank you yeah. so much appreciate yeah memes are memes you know like when the barbie oppenheimer thing um everyone was having fun with the screen grab like oppenheimer's not coming after you um, definitely toe the line when it comes to, um, when it comes to cartoons, but yeah, like participate in the trends any way you can and just definitely tell your direct report, like, Hey, like you want me to be the best I can be at my job. And that means being on time with these trends and the longer we wait, um, the worse it's just going to be in the long run. Perfect. Thank you. Of course. Um, okay, the Q&A, Craig, how can we know check if we're shadow banned? Um, so when you go into your Instagram, you can go to your account status and it'll tell you if you have green check marks throughout the, um, throughout, uh, there's three things that can be recommended to. And if it shows that you're on, um, some of your content can't be recommended to followers. Um, you'll have the option to edit it or, and usually if it's a video, just edit the caption, um, or you can archive it. And that's how you know if you're shadow banned. Um, Caitlin, do you recommend ever even bothering with TikTok or other platforms? Um, so I think TikTok could really be beneficial, but you need a full blown team to make it like, make it work. You need extra, extra brain power to succeed on TikTok. Um, so, and also if you're a brand that doesn't touch the product, like, you know, you're an accessory brand or you're a podcast, um, you'll have more luck. But um, I've seen, um, I judged on the Cannabis Cleos this year and I gave a gold um, gold trophy to Gotham NYC because I think that they um, they were doing interview style. They were doing really, really great videos. So um, that was just something out of the norm. So yeah, you know, I definitely would bother with TikTok if it makes sense for your brand. Hi, Craig. Hi, uh, you did that so quickly. Could you review that one more time? Uh, for the shadow band? Yeah, I'm opened and I want to physically. Yeah, hear. yeah. Here, here. Let me open up my phone as well. And I'm sure okay, everyone. So yeah, you're gonna. Because we're all wondering if we are. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna go all. You're gonna go to your settings and go yeah. all the way down to account status. 
Yes. You're going to click that and then you're going to see removed content. What yep. can't be recommended monetizations and features you can't use. So if you have a green check mark next to what can't be recommended, then yep. Then you are not shadow banned. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So if you clicked into that and you did like, let's say you, um, had that little exclamation point next to it, then you'll go into your content and it'll like show you like which content is like helping you be shadow banned. Um, and can't be recommended, meaning like, you know, doesn't get pushed and on followers and then you can go into it and you can either archive it or you can edit maybe the caption and then, um, that'll help you get off that standing. Yeah. We have things taken down once in a while and even lose live privilege, but not in a long time. But the most recent weird thing we had, we had a black square put over half of a dab container over a Kalix container. And that is totally new. I've never seen that before. And I've posted tons and tons of hats. So that huh. was bizarre. It was just a black square and then they let it go. Interesting. Yeah. I'll see if I can find the photo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, all we are are our stories and our anecdotes because we don't have direct rules. So that's what I like, especially on LinkedIn. I always try and say what's happening. I always try and encourage that because that's how we learn from each other. <laughs> right. Hey, yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, Sabrina, um, how should one post about advocacy awareness and legislation without stepping into the opinionated stance area? Um, just be super non-biased, right? You know, kind of just like take on the articles. Um, if, uh, you can definitely really put on a non-biased, um, you know, like kin them with the facts, right? You know, X and X amount of people are incarcerated still for cannabis, you know, just talk about that. Um, let your followers voice their opinions in the comments because that's really great engagement. Um, I guess I should, you know, say like, really don't shy away from opinions. The more people are talking and arguing on your posts, the more engagement it's going to get because it people like people are engaging with it. So it's going to get pushed to even more followers and even non-followers. So, um, I feel like Instagram one Instagram is where humor goes to die. I don't think anyone has a sense of humor on Instagram. So, you know, if you post something and everyone's like, this is stupid, blah, 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 blah. They're just talking to talk. Um, if you like, there are definitely going to be people who like your pose to agree. Um, I work with a podcast and over the weekend I posted, you know, like what's your favorite dispensary. And so many people from California are like, none, none, trap, gross. But then you have the people in like Maryland and New York and Jersey and all the other states who really still like their dispensaries and maybe ones who don't have home grow. And they were like, oh yeah, like I love my dispensary. So the old me would have taken all that hate at first and be like, oh my God, no, no, bad post, delete, delete. But instead I was like, wait a second, let them all talk it out amongst themselves let them all have their own opinions you can go to high times you can go to weed maps you can go to complex tmz everyone is arguing on instagram the only thing it does is break, like boost your engagement so don't shy away from the controversial it's only going to be better for you yeah <laughs> anyone else Awesome. Uh, I actually have a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was looking up our account status because I found that really interesting. It's like, oh, shadow man. Never really. Yeah. So I went out to our account status and it, there's a what can't re be recommended button. And mm -hmm. we have two exclamation points, like two. Okay. Ones. And uh -huh. I look at the content and one of them is a post that was just, um, promoting something from the Department of Cannabis Control, our state organization for, you know, cannabis. And I'm mm -hmm. confused about that. Um, it was one of their images that I just downloaded and used. And another one was for one of our, um, one of our members and sponsors, Plan Air. They are uh, a firm that help with site plans and things of that nature. And 
maybe it's because part of their logo is so you want to be a legal grower <laughs> exclamation point whatever question mark mm -hmm. and there's a weed like leaf behind it but yeah I can't understand why and it says this can't be recommended to your audience essentially and I was like oh that's interesting so what does that mean yeah, so that's when, you know, and you look at the option to either edit it or archive it. Um, that's, you know, it probably has maybe the trigger words cannabis in there. Um, it could be the caption, um, maybe that has the trigger words. Um, it really isn't always going to be so obvious. Um, but especially like with news, right? And <laughs> I see you, Bill. Yes, <laughs> Beer Bro Farms. Um, when you post news, obviously there's trigger words in there. So um you can blur out for future posts. Um, or you can, you know, kind of like I've had journalist friends like um put like a little dash through those trigger words. Um, but if it's like an advocacy post, um, and uh, can I see it? Let me see your, let me see, because you can click into the post. Um, it probably is just the trigger words. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the leaf. It's the leaf. It's yes, the leaf. It's the leaf. Yes. Okay, so here's the, the other one is just. <laughs> It just, well, it's hard to see, but it just says Department of Cannabis Control. And it was like promoting and, their meetings. It was really, yeah. you know, it was just like kind of lazy. I just was like, oh, that's their logo. But so that's it is the thing. leaf and cannabis. Okay. Yeah. And I've also seen some people in, in post, you know, when they write the word cannabis, they'll do like C and then like an at sign. Mm -hmm. it, and I've oh never understood. I mean, I kind of figured, but now I understand. Yep, the A, um, the uh, weed, uh, like like um, Y or so O U I D, like we is in French. People say weed. Um, oh. There's lots of yeah. <laughs> there's cute. lots of right herb, right Craig. Um, there's lots of ways to go about it. Um, but if you do want to post something like that and it says cannabis. Just take a blur editing tool and just put it above. People are gonna know what it means. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna understand. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, Alex, editing and archiving posts is sufficient to get back the green check mark or does it need to be fully deleted? You could archive it. Yeah. So if you edit, um, they'll ask you to edit the caption. And sometimes I just remove the entire caption, just put like a little emoji because, you know, what's done is done. The post is already out there if you don't want to archive it. But yeah, you don't have to delete it. You can get archived. And this is all AI automation. Why am I working in that word? It's all AI. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, after you archive some, more can pop up. But either way, you're literally working with Instagram's broken tool. But that is what you can do. Uh, Bo, Clio Canvas does not have its own Insta. We are under the uh, Clio Awards. And the Clio Cannabis Awards are um, around like every September. Um, and they announced the. there's a few juries. I was on the marketing and advertising jury and um, it was, it was incredible. Um, if you're in cannabis and you're ever wanting to look to get involved, um, you can go to their website and yeah, introduce yourself. Um, it's a really cool thing to do. Um, Sabrina, do you have any post recommendations for LinkedIn? How should it, how should it differentiate from Instagram? So for LinkedIn, um, I, it's kind of interesting. So there's like a lot of brands that will treat LinkedIn like Instagram, um, you know, wild for instance, like they do like vibe posts, like, you know, they'll like have videos of like the rain and be like, this is where I want to like smoke a joint or eat an edible. So that's, you know, that's very Instagram-y, but it's on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is great for professional and company news. And you can also do that on um, on Instagram. Um, LinkedIn, you have a lot of freedom. You can post the words cannabis. You can pretty much post all of that. The only time, and product photos as well. The only time I have heard Instagram um, remove posts is kind of when it's a little wholesale salesy. You know, like if you're trying to move pounds or stuff like that, then that is where they get a little, um, that's where they get a little weird. Um, but LinkedIn, you know, 
keep it professional. Um, keep it interesting. Keep it to the brand um, employee posts, uh, good news. If you want to have thought leadership, things like that, those are great for LinkedIn. Okay, any other questions? Well, a lot of questions. That's great. <laughs> uh, if you have any others, uh, slide them in real, real quick while we have the moment to do so. Answer your questions. Um, yeah. Elizabeth, did you want to um have before talk about your <laughs> your um your your book thing? Oh yeah. So um so my social media marketing guide is um y'all were in for a treat. It is pretty much this presentation, but you get to have it. <laughs> um it is really just um I felt like real examples, which was really important. Um, I'm coming out with a LinkedIn one this week, um, especially it's mostly for your personal brand. Um, I'm going to start making more guides. It's just tedious. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I am, I'm super approachable, um, especially on LinkedIn. So feel free to send me a DM anytime, any questions you have. Um, like I mentioned, we are like, we're all our own anecdotes. So, um, please keep sharing. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'll put in here, um, my Instagram is Liz Udell. Um, is everyone's a thought leader on LinkedIn? Is there a way to stick it? Um, yeah, I think, um, so. I can, like, I don't call myself a thought leader. People call myself a thought leader just because I have like really high engagement and I just get people, um, talking. Um, I really like holding a, like holding a place for people to talk. Um, I'm very open and honest and still professional on LinkedIn. Um, I would say, you know, people's track record and where they've worked is really important when you want to vet a thought leader. Um, I've worked at a lot of well-known companies, so people have more trust in me. Um, even when I'm trying to hire someone under me, I find it's very difficult to find someone who has worked in a lot of um, major brands, whether you're in-house or in an agency. Um, so you can make your own judgments on LinkedIn for sure. Um, and really you don't like, know who to trust. Um, the typical like chat GPT LinkedIn style um, posts, I can't stand. I think that those are inauthentic. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if you all follow me on LinkedIn, but I am very just, I, I, I have a very personal voice. I just talk like I'm literally writing in my journal. Um, and that's what resonates. Um, I think the more professional salesy side corporate gets, um, downvoted on LinkedIn, um, because LinkedIn really wants human beings at the end of the day to like share, um, share their experiences. Um, I ghostwrite for a few people on LinkedIn and help them craft their voice. Um, because they, you know, they don't want to be like too robotic either. They really just want to like be or like articulate what they want to say. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn can be really tough to navigate, but you'll see the honest and, um, personable people that you want to follow and like interact with for sure. Okay, everyone. Any last questions before we wrap up? That was amazing, Elizabeth. I learned a lot. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks. And everyone here feels the same. Um, yeah, and, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah, it was awesome. It was great. <laughs> great day. Uh, okay, so for those who weren't able to make it, uh, sh share it with your friends. This is this webinar is being recorded, so it's going to be available on our website at NC 
uh, cannabisalliance.org. I'm going to share it with Elizabeth as well so she can post it on all of her channels. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all we have for today. This was awesome. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for coming out. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. you all so much. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>